Hey, we're Jeff and Bree. In June of 2022, we both quit our corporate software careers to travel the world as one baggers to cross off the items on our bucket list that our PTO just wouldn't allow for, as well as some other cool stuff along the way while trying to remain as budget friendly as possible. This was five dollars uh, each. Each. Now we're back in our favorite country, Japan, where we will be exploring from the north to the south for the next two and a half months. So don't forget to subscribe and tag along. Welcome to Tokyo, Japan. We have just arrived from Auckland and it was a very long journey. If you haven't watched our couch video, go and check that out. This is the one we put out before this. But tonight we are taking a quick layover and we're staying in a capsule hotel in the Narita airport. Yeah, so it was a little hard finding out where to go and we're definitely in like a bit of a rundown basement, but it's actually right by the trains that you take to go into the city. The reason we're staying here is because Tokyo is not our final destination at the moment. We are actually on our way to Sapporo in the morning, but we wanted to subtract the third leg of our journey from Auckland and just go ahead and stay the night here and then hit it again tomorrow as we head up north. That little tube that you just saw in that photo is gonna be home for the next 20 hours, roughly. Jeff is currently checking into our capsule hotel for the evening. So we will be splitting up for the evening. He is gonna be going to the men's only side and I will be in the women's only side. So I'll see him in the morning. Where's the first I have this? I my own locker and I have to change all this slippers. In Japanese capsule hotels, guests are expected to be as silent as possible to ensure that no other guests are disturbed. And true to Japanese culture, there is a zero tolerance policy for street shoes, so slippers are offered to wear throughout the facilities. Each guest is assigned a personal locker that is housed in a large locker room. This room is the last place you can wear your street shoes and where you can keep any of your personal belongings, like my large bag or Jeff's backpack. Jeff and I were both given our amenity kits, which included pajamas, these were actually really soft, earplugs, a toothbrush with toothpaste, a complete towel set, and a tote bag to carry all of your items. Nearest to the lockers was the bathroom area, which had more than enough room for multiple people at any given time, and a private toilet room, which came with the fancy Japanese toilet settings, one of the best parts about Japan. Next to those were the showers. There were only three of these rooms, but they were empty pretty much the entire time I was staying here. They also offered free shampoo, conditioner, and body wash in each room. On the other side of the bathroom wall was the sleeping area with all of the capsules. Your locker number was also the corresponding number to the bed that belongs to you for the evening. There were probably about 50 to 60 beds in here. There is no lounging area in the capsule hotel, so most people just find their beds right away and go in. I myself decided to stand here and twirl instead. Both Jeff and myself ended up getting the top bunks, which was really great on the knees. Once inside of your private capsule, there is a privacy screen you can pull down right before going to bed. Welcome to my personal pod. As you will notice, I am whispering, and that is because it is dead silence in here, and out of respect for my neighbors, I'm going to try to keep it to as low as possible. So let me give you a quick tour. Behind me is where you'll see my little electronics panel, where I can plug in approximately one item and I also have a little radio uh, but obviously I'm not going to use that and then there is a little dimmer for the light up above me and then on the right side there is a little cautionary light in case something goes wrong maybe an earthquake I have no idea hopefully I don't need to use that in addition to the electric 
time to find stuff. I am quite literally the last one left and I'm waiting on Jeff but he's not replying so I think he fell asleep and I don't know that he set an alarm so um, I'm just kind of hanging out solo in here. They also took my bedding so I can't go sit in my bed comfortably so I have to just sit in the front lobby and hope that he responds to me. It is extremely cold compared to where we just came from, which was New Zealand. And the good news is I heard back from Jeff. He overslept and he is now getting ready. So I've just been kind of exploring the courtyard area and I just love Japan. I'm so happy to be here. He's alive. Still alive. That was an experience I will probably never forget for the rest of my life. I don't know about you, but man, the alarms are going off at like, 4 a.m. for the early international flights and they were like bomb sirens and it was just crazy. What about yours? Someone had a full-on conversation right outside of my bunk and it was a little frustrating, but honestly, earplugs are life. Yes. I really enjoyed the experience and um, I think I would do it again. I like capsule hotels. Yeah, the only issue I had was that they had one pillow that was basically like a brick made out of like little beads, <laughs> which wasn't the most comfortable, but other than that, it was actually fantastic and I slept the best this morning after that first flight left. Yeah, and honestly, if you were as jet lagged as we were, we went to bed pretty early, we were able to get some sleep. If you're stuck in the Narita airport and you have a long layover, just come over here, get a slot if you can, take a nap. They even let you go in and take a shower if you want to. I heard people checking in for that. I hope this video helped you make an informed decision on whether or not to stay here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.